Hello, people. We are back. Act to the podcast, episode one sixty three, and we are back for another episode of us. It is your boy, International Walt. It's your girl, Tash, the co-host with the mostest. The co-host is with the most as she is back. Um, we back for another episode of us. Catch us out there on Facebook, act to the podcast.com, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and Spotify at Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podcast Index, Podcast Addict, Podcast Chaser, Player FM, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts. Wherever you get your podcasts, type us in. We're there. And we'll all up. episodes up. And are uploaded all episodes are uploaded 163 so go find us somewhere and watch us well up to 162 but one you'll be able to find yeah, us you one too knew you what know. i was saying yeah but you'll be able to find it um let's get right to it how are you i'm doing good um this uh this is a short but long week you know well it was short for corporate america because we had off monday but um just a busy week, but I'm feeling good um, mentally. I was say, how's it a long week? You've been to work for two days. Well, I was trying not to date the week, date the show, but by the end of this week, it would have been four days. But it just feels like a long week. That's why I said a short, long week. Mm-hmm. You know, well, since you said it, it's Wednesday. It feels like Thursday night. You know, yeah. feels mm-hmm. longer. Um, but mentally, mentally, I'm a nine just because I'm tired. You know, that kind of. Say I'm looking forward. I have been getting some rest. I, you know, I try not to take the melatonin every night. I did pop one last night because I don't want to play about my sleep. I, when I want rest, I want rest. Tonight, I don't think I'm going to need anything. I think I'm going to take it down. Mm. I might take one just to ensure it. <laughs> I, was say, I know I'm taking one. But, um, yeah, I'm a nine. Nothing's wrong. Just, you know, tired. Um, finances are... A nine, just because, you know, want to leave some room for improvement always, but God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he was raised in the church. Um, work is, work is a nine. Nothing wrong. Just work is work. And uh, work worked me today. Um, yeah. Well, you drove 123 miles today. No, 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 no. I double that because I had to come home. Well, that's both ways. I know what I'm talking about. 63 miles there. No, 111 miles there. Yeah. So you drove 200 miles today. Exactly. You're a noodle. It worked. It, it was work. You're a noodle. I won't do that. Well, I mean, I won't have to do that again because, yeah, we, we, um, I took care of that. That's going to be virtual from now on. But it was a new partner, a new relationship we were establishing and, um, didn't quite go. Um, That's driving to the shore twice. That's driving to New York. Further. New York is 99 miles. I was near the border of New like not New York City, like New York State. Like the long part, the central part. Yeah. I was in them. I see mountains. I didn't even this is a little um ignorance on my part because I guess I should have known, but I didn't know New Jersey had mountains. But I, I I was in the mountains. Mm. I didn't know we had, did you know we had mountains? Yeah. I think it's part of the Appalachians that come over. I don't know, but I know North Jersey is um a bit more rural than South Jersey. I seen Wayne, I seen Montclair, I seen Patterson. I had never been up that far before. Don't plan to be up that far again. But yeah, uh yeah, it was I seen some amazing looking houses. But I'm oh, happy like it. it was daytime because I was in the mountains and there was yeah, no like street it. lights. Um, but I mean, it was day- it was a lot of traffic. It wasn't like I was solo. And where I was was, you know, just popped up was a courthouse. Like I, it was a courtroom, a police station next door. So just very um, rural, not rural in the sense of like farmland rural, but rural in the sense of mountain land. But I don't like it. I know you don't like me going I that far. I don't like it at all. Yeah. I didn't. Now, when I looked at you, the clock where you at, it said you were 63 miles away. I had no idea you were 111 miles well, away. Well, probably 63 miles away from you. Yeah, I know. No, but I did it when we were home, when I was home. So you were 63 miles away from home, which I thought that's where you were. No, I was on my way home by yeah. the time you got home. Yeah. Because I, we, matter of fact, we, I, we left kind of the same. I left there at 2 o'clock. Which I'm grateful because I was scheduled to be there until 3.30, but things didn't plan the way they planned it. So it was like, okay, we out. Ain't no sense in staying. So that was great because I was scared of running to rush hour traffic. I just, 
I'm not for a full day outside anymore. <laughs> like, I'm just not for that. I'm not about that life anymore. Mm. Um. So, lastly, my physicality. I'm a nine. Um, work has worked me the last couple of days, so I didn't get a chance to work out. But I, I feel good. I still have been eating good. I have not succumbed to any temptation. Jesus Christ. Which is great. Um. So, yeah, I'm nines across the board. Nueve. Nueve. Toro nueve. Um, that's good. It's good to hear. How are you? I am... Um. I'm 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 great actually. Mentally, I'm a nine. I feel like a nine. I want to leave room for improvement, like you said. Mm -hmm. Finances, same thing. Nine. Um, work is a solid eight. Um, it's just like moving fast, a lot going on, a lot of moving parts. Um, and it, Did they stop the changes? No. Oh, okay. No. And sometimes shit can you just be overwhelming. It's like you know you got. 35 things happening in a day it's it i don't care who you are how good you are it just gets like whew, we need a fucking break um physically i feel like a nine um you know i am what i am i'm in the gym every day um hopefully it reflects in my body but um even if it don't it reflects in the inside i feel good absolutely i feel absolutely great so and you um, look great to me so yeah that's my um Wilds and woes, what do you got? Ups, downs, stops, goes, um, blacks, whites. My wild and woe is kind of, there's some duality. My woe is just my long um, road trip today. You know, it is part of my job. Not to that extent has it been. And I don't, you know, intend for it to be in the future. Um, not that it was anything bad, but, and I actually don't mind a road trip. I, I like driving. I had a great Playlist Tasha Cobbs kept me company all the way there. You like driving? I do. I, I like I like um driving in unknown, like seeing new places. Eight. Driving. I know. You know you 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 know I've drove I drove us home ten hours straight. We ain't stopped to go to the bathroom, nothing. I don't mind. We both you. have done that. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean you've done it way more than I have. Yeah, we both have but done not that. straight. Ten Which hours? Mean, straight. When we came from North Carolina that time, babe, we wanted to get home so bad. We didn't stop to pee. We didn't stop. We had snacks in the car. Was out. I think I peed in the bottle, though. I'm sure you I did. Yeah, I didn't just, like, not pee. Yeah, I'm sure you did. <laughs> but, um, I, I guess that, and because it wasn't, um, a productive day in the way that was intended, no faults of mine or my staff, that kind of put, like, a even bigger, like, want want on it because it was, like, hmm. But it was a great learning experience for me. But that was just my wow. Nothing, you know, horrible. But it was just like, sheesh. Um, my wow and the other side of it is I'm continuing to learn more about my job. And I am enjoying it, you know. Um, I, 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 I am grateful, um, you know, for the opportunities that are presented, the, the rooms that I'm able to be in, the conversations that I'm able to have, and hopefully the change that I'm able to effectuate in the world. So Initiatives. <laughs> um, yeah, my woe is that um, every time I work with a new project manager, um, we fight. Oh boy, we fuss. Um, so obviously, there's fighting and fussing. Um, my wow is that you know, as a man, a black man, I'm always comfortable with confrontation. So I was able to um, have a talk, mm -hmm. you know, sort things out. Get on the same page and everything's great. So can I ask a question? Sure. A moment of, of accountability. You said every time you work with a new project manager, meaning that there's different people, but you're the common denominator. Is it them or you? The common denominator is that new. Okay. So that's the common denominator, not necessarily the person, the fact that they're new. Okay. So that's the common so, so they're a new they're 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 not just new to you working with them. They're like new employees. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I thought it was... New to their job compared to 23 years at my job. Right. I just thought you were working with a different project manager each time. I, sometimes I am. And no, no. What I mean is that I didn't realize that being different, they were new in those moments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's like a thing where I guess like... Um, break this guy in or you know show him the way mm -hmm. like that we do things so I kind of get that part of it but it's difficult so, a, a lot of times because I like to just go on my own and I have to be inclusive so mm -hmm. I guess in that sense 
when I'm being inclusive, it means explaining. And I don't have the tolerance for that all the time. Okay. So, yeah. But today you found a common ground? Oh, yeah. We found a common ground, talked, and, you know, was, was, was at the precipice of, like, you know, you don't like me, I don't like you. But it was like, no, we really like each other, but, you know, let's just... I just do things like this and you do things like that. And it was like, I thought so. So, yeah. That, that's cool. And I'm happy that as men, black men, white men, whomever, as yeah, men. A black guy and a white you, guy. But I'm saying regardless of the race, just y'all are men. I'm happy that y'all were able to come to that moment of having some vulnerability. Because like you said, you could just, so many people walk away from situations with beef when it's like, like you said, you could have left it at, I don't like you, you don't like me. But y'all realize, like, nah, it ain't that. We yeah, really do like each other. I don't like even know other. you not to like you. So right. I, I want to give that a chance because I don't want to say to a person that I don't know, I don't like you. Like, you know what? You didn't do anything to me. We're just having um, a head button, comp not a competition, but head button over what we both care about. Right. So let's get on the same page and align and, and care together. Can like you imagine kind of how many beasts could be squashed if people realize it really ain't no beef. We just Yeah, need to and that's the thing. If we don't communicate, that creates the beef. Right. So the fact that, and you know, you do communicate, it's like, okay, like before anything even uh, gets, gets speculated or, or, uh, or festers, it's, mm -hmm. you know, it's put out. I'm, I'm proud of you. So yeah, I was proud of myself. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, what are we talking about today? David Lucas. You know who David Lucas is? Um, Not really, but I have been hearing the conversation. I know he's a comedian. He's a comedian that came up in the Joe Rogan crew. He's on the Tip uh, Kill Tony podcast, um, hosted by Tony Hinchcliffe. I'm sure you saw him before. Probably don't can't picture his face right now, but you've mm -hmm. seen him on Rogan before. And it's part of his group of comedians, and he's a black guy. And he made this joke about George Floyd. Um, which, you know, was in 2020 and a lot of people say time has passed and, you know, that's what, what matters when you make jokes about um, tr traumatic events. Uh, so he made a joke about George Floyd saying that he, if he was the cop, he wouldn't have kneeled on him, he would have shot him. So my question is not too much, you know, about the joke, but can you go too far in comedy or is comedy a uh, um, a space where you got free range to say and do whatever you want. And us as fans can pick and turn off who we don't want to see and don't like who. We don't have to like a joke or like a comedian. If we don't like that style of comedy, you just don't watch it. Right. But is being on a stage, being a comedian, that art form up there by yourself, do you have full carte blanche to the world to talk about everything, anything? I mean, you do only because... The, the world isn't, you know, monolithic. Mm -hmm. So just you have carte blanche to talk about whatever and it's going to fall in the laps of those who want to receive it. Mm -hmm. Those who don't want to there. So, I mean, and, and even if you didn't talk about controversial topics, there are still going to be some people that are displeased with with your style of comedy or right. what you say. Or some do. people go for shock value. Right. And some people like, you know, me. I am not um, a fan <coughs> of any comedy about mentally challenged people. I, I'm, I'm not mentally challenged. I don't have anyone mentally challenged in my family. And but you've it's always just, been that I've, way. You know since the beginning. Yep. It's since just I'm, something yep, you've always been that, that doesn't sit well with me. I can't bring myself to laugh at it. The only person it. I've seen you laugh at it with is Martin. I've seen you laugh at it when we watch You So Crazy, Run Tell That, and Martin do. Like, you'll just like snicker and and like sh and shake your head you won't like laugh laugh i like, can't even remember like the like his that but that's what popped into yeah. my head when i think of somebody imitating like a person who's mentally challenged i remember you laughing at him yeah i can't even remember what part of his show is somebody mentally challenged but you your memory is better than mine but that's just something that has never set well with me um, so again, I don't even think people are offended necessarily by personal things because no, now I like if somebody tell a fat joke, like I'm not offended by that. He, he, ha, ha. I'm a laugh if it's funny. Now but if the, the person, I'm sorry, if the person is targeted at is they think it's funny, does it still make you uncomfortable? 
Because like recently we was at a Dave Chappelle show where he was like, I'm not going to talk about the trans, but I'm going to do handicap jokes. And we saw the, like handicapped people there in wheelchairs busting a gut, cracking up laughing. So when you see that, does it make you less uncomfortable about it? Handicapped and mentally challenged are two different things. True, true. Right. So, true. I mean, yeah, and I don't feel, and, and not to say it's right or wrong, I don't feel the same way about, like, the handicapped jokes that okay. he was telling versus mental challenge. Mental challenge. Okay. And you know what? For me, it's weird. I don't know. This is, it's like this empathy thing because a parent of a mentally challenged kid may be at a show and find it funny and laugh. Mm -hmm. But that's where my mind has always gone to. Like, you don't know who in this audience has a child at home and these jokes are hurting their feelings. Why I care about somebody's feelings that I don't even know if they have those feelings, I don't know, but that's how I've always felt and I've just never been able to bring myself to land. But does it make you less comfortable like at, at that show? When you saw the handicapped people there, did it make you less comfortable, like to like less cringeworthy? Well, because again, I didn't feel it. like that about the handicapped people. Okay, well, if it was mentally challenged people there. Do I don't think, think they would understand. You know, I no, I think it would still bother me. I okay. think, I think. Now the handicap jokes is it's still a little cringy, and you hope that the people in the wheelchair, um, you know, they just laugh with it. But I think it, if I seen if okay, let's say you know he was telling his joke, and you seen four or five people in wheelchairs start leaving out, mm -hmm. I'm not going to laugh no more because now I realize people's feelings are hurt. Right. It's like, all right, this ain't funny no more. I don't think I would laugh no anymore either because yeah. I know like it, it's hurting somebody. Yeah, it's like, all right, stop. That's enough. That's, and yeah. and I'm going to feel like if he sees this, now it's malicious because exactly. you see people hurt now. Yeah, So exactly. like get off these jokes and go on to something else. Right. So um, when you get well, up, and, and let me just say that too. That's the thing. I think comedy should be funny. It shouldn't be hurtful. So it's like the comedians can tell their jokes. You but that's never relative know. though. It's well, eight billion people. That's what I was gonna say. You never know who's who it is going to hurt. Right. But at the moment, if you if you realize that it is hurting somebody, then I think they should have enough professionalism to pull back, to pivot, to kind of change, but to keep digging and digging and digging, and you see somebody's being hurt. I think that's when it's like, all right, this ain't funny no more. You hear some of the great comedians of like George Carlin, Dave Chappelle, um, Kevin Hart, like some of the big tycoons of comedy, um, Earthquake say like their job is to offend you, like make you laugh, but offend you, take the world's worst events, find the humor in it and bring it to the table. Like, do you yeah. believe that wholeheartedly? Ari Shafir is another a comedian that works with Joe Rogan. And the day that Kobe Bryant died, he made a joke about his death. And he did that three times before with other people that died. It's kind of his shtick for shock value. Mm -hmm. But people was like, he got canceled for like a year for that shit. And it's, it's like, you go too far. And I don't think... I think the joke is insensitive and it's supposed to be funny. You could have made a joke about George about George Floyd if it was funny. If you can make that funny. Now, I wouldn't because I don't know how to make it funny. Right. But you're a comedian. If you could make a chuckle out of that, then go, go ahead and make the joke. But it shouldn't land like on a, a visceral sense. Yeah, and, and like you said, so the joke about, you know, Kobe Bryant, you have to think about too. Who are you hurting? Like a lot of people, you were a, a huge Kobe Bryant. You are a and huge was Kobe offended Bryant. by the joke. Well, like, I mean, damn. I don't even know what the joke was, but what I'm saying is, you were hurt by his death. Right. So at that moment, it's like you have to. It, when people say like, um, know the, know the room, feel the temperature. Right. Like you know, take the temperature of your room and realize sometimes it everything ain't a laughing matter or maybe it, later on it might be or you may be able to find some levity but there are some situations where you don't need to find no levity you just need to allow people to grieve and you don't even have to address it it's like it's it's like you know 911 i don't think there could ever be a joke that you tell about people jumping out of the windows if you want to like, I, I don't, like you said, I'm not a comedian, so I don't even know how to find humor in any of it. But you know, I it, think there's humor in 9/11. I don't think it's humor in people jumping out of windows. But I've heard comedy about 9/11 that was like, okay, this was funny. Like these motherfuckers, they they hijacked the plane with box cutters, like that kind of shit. Like well, adding yeah. some adding some uh some levity to the situation where it's not. It's like a punchline. 
So yeah. it's like, oh, they, they got on the plane. They took, you believe that shit? They took over the plane with box cutters. Like, if black people was on it, that wouldn't happen. Ha, ha, ha. That's the joke. But you can find a joke in 9-11. To find a joke about people jumping out of windows because fire is, is there, yeah, well, I don't see how you make that fun. That's what I'm, I'm talking about, the actual deaths, the people that died. And it's, it, so I'm just saying there are some things, it's enough stuff in the world that we can laugh at. Or that we might not even think that we can laugh at, but comedians in their own way can get us to laugh at it. It's some things that you should just leave alone. Like, I, I don't think anybody, like Kobe Bryant, even like you think about Whitney Houston, you know, the way she died, you know, drugs, the tub, blah, blah. Like, I heard jokes her, about, yeah. her daughter, unfortunately, passed away the same, same way. way. Like, it's, that certain things should, like, be off limits. Like, it's enough for, for you to poke fun at so and talk about. So, basically, what you're saying is you, you should be able to say anything you want, but you should have some morals. Yeah, and you being offended is different than being hurt. Like, I can be offended by something, but doesn't necessarily mean my feelings is hurt by right. it. So, I think that's... And it's probably a fine line. So, for them to say it's their job to offend us, because you can find funny in in being offended in some cases. It, because you can be offended and then kind of, like, brush it off. Because it's like, they don't really know me. Like, like not to, like, be self-deprecating, because I love myself. But, again, fat <laughs> jokes, some things that they might say, you know, might be like, okay, I feel a little offended. But I ain't really taking it personal, because they don't really know me. But if you, but if there's some things that you talk about, like, a sexual assault victim, and it's like, ho, oh, like, now you, you're, you're veering on the line of hurting people's feelings. Like, it's just right. certain things that you shouldn't touch or places that you shouldn't go. And I guess you have to be a great comedian to know how to walk that line without crossing it. And maybe this dude just isn't. When you talk about a comedian like a Corey Holcomb, who is known for that kind of comedy you're talking about, where it's like abortion jokes, um, you know, like not like just like punching down on people and kids and all that kind of shit. Like his big thing is shock value. And like, I tell jokes where I don't really give a fuck about anything. And some people, he, you know, he sells out what he sells out, but there's a group of people who like that kind of comedy. Like, I think you limit yourself by being that, yeah, you know, yeah. by wanting wanting to be the person that always is going after shock value. Right. You know, like, what I am think I you say limit tonight, your audience. Like, make everybody be like, God damn. Or like, like where it's so cringy. That. Again, you, you're going to hurt some feelings. You're going to be too offensive to some people. And you're going to limit your success, I think, in being that way. I mean, doesn't mean, now, you may be successful to a point where you are satisfied with that, then have at it but i don't think that you if you are that type of comedian you will ever reach the stature of a dave Chappelle, a chris rock a george carlin an earthquake a kevin hart you know I, so i think again for those comedians who take that route it that is what it is they develop business like i yeah. want to not change i want to be me they develop their fan base and they you know they they Aerie go with Spears it is another one like you just got your fan base and, you know, if they rock with you, they rock with you. But you never going to be in, you know, these in Madison Square Garden selling out shit. Yeah. I mean, it's like you think about a Paul Mooney, right? He had his shtick. We knew how he felt about black people, how he felt about white people. He had that brutal honesty with him. He was big, but he the, the, he he put a ceiling on himself, which I'm sure he didn't mind because he was still had a successful career right. but he put a ceiling on himself by the kind of content that you know he spoke about so i mean i don't think you know to answer your original question i don't think that um there's there's a limit to what comedians can say because nothing will ever please everybody something somebody will always be offended by something but you got to use your morals, mm -hmm. you know, to, to allow decorum. that to guide you. Because you can't just get up there and say jokes and say something and be so hurtful and so offensive and then stand on the fact that it was just jokes. Because it's like, why would you even say that? Why would you go there? Why would you do that? Like, you didn't, nothing inside of you stopped, made you think like, mm, that's a little bit. I mean, I go to a comedy club. I, I, um, I know I'm going to hear some crazy stuff, especially if they take your phone. I know I'm going to hear some crazy mm -hmm. stuff, but I don't think that I'm going to hear 
the craziest shit I ever heard in my life. Right. Like, I'm not going in with that kind of, uh, it, like, this is what I'm about to see. Like, somebody's going to say some off-the-wall shit. Yeah. Do I think it's going to be raw and edgy? Do I, what I, I heard the, um, the, the joke he made, and I didn't, I think it was distasteful as hell. Like, and you don't make jokes like that. And being a black man, like, I, and I don't think you tie yourself to blackness and like and and what I'm saying, but you feel you felt that murder in your in your soul, mm -hmm. and you don't tie yourself to blackness where it curbs your comedy and you can't talk about this because you're so black. But, but there that, are some things yeah, you that particular alone. thing, yeah, the way that it shook the world, you should have just left that alone. Right, you should have left that alone. Right, and and and, uh, and not to like dwell on it, but like talking about nine eleven. Imagine a. Middle Eastern comedian like saying something about how he may have or, like it's just some things you or can't... like the, the people jumping out of the windows. What if he was making jokes about that? Like they were jumping out like Jack in the Boxes. It would be like, what? Yeah, the fuck are you yeah, talking you gotta, about? Yeah, it's some things you just should leave alone. Yeah, like you can't say that joke. Um, moving on. Um, Chris Brown was in the news. Um, young Chris Breezy. We are taught in therapy that, you know, you are not the worst thing that you've done in your life. But by society standards, this kid keeps getting railroaded, um, just treated unfairly, I think. I'm not going to say railroaded, but but treated unfairly. Um, by society standards, are you the are you your worst moment? Um, I think so, unfortunately. By, you know, well, the, well, let me say this. The perception of... If you are a black man, and this I know this isn't necessarily a race thing, but it is unfortunate that it we those um labels stick to us harder and longer and with stronger adhesive. Do you think than it, it has? Do you think it has to do have? Do you think the victim has something to do with it? Do you think if it was? not a victim just one of chris brown's girlfriends i don't know a baby mom he may have had when he was 19. do you think it's the same effect now in 2024 when he's like like 38 years old possibly not because rihanna was such a big a big name a superstar and rihanna you know she has the thing with it is it's, it's very tricky because while rihanna has forgiven him and i, I think it, it was mentioned like you know they have a cordial relationship she still stands firm on against domestic violence right. as she should right um like she has fired people um drea michelle ari fletcher they kind of made comments um that not proponents of domestic violence they just said like shady stuff that she felt like nah like not like nah you like you need to take a hard stance against domestic violence and their comments weren't for that and even, was she fired them was yeah it? they were fenty models oh okay I yeah didn't know that. and they lost and even ari like the girl ari she had said you know who that is like ari lennox no she ari, ari fletcher she's oh, yeah, she heard both fenty, fletcher, yeah. yeah so she <laughs> had made a comment saying something like you know how women talk like i need a gangster dude like i want him to grip me up by my neck you know if I'm if I'm talking crazy out my mouth, grip me up. Not like beat me, but like strong arm me a little bit. Get me in check. Nope. Rihanna. <laughs> Damn. Cut. Damn. And she even admitted like she she didn't. I don't think she put a dollar amount on it, but she was like that was a wake up call. She lost a bag because of that. Drea, I, Drea happened prior to that. I forget some comments that she made about similar. I think like she wanted to do the slap her or something like don't like something to that effect same thing no cut so rihanna makes it clear like she has zero tolerance but at the same time she has forgiven him my thing is you know there have been so many people in i don't want to say bigger names but so many people in the entertainment industry that have had crimes against them but yet they don't get the same backlash. So that's what I'm saying. Is it fair for him? This happened when he was 19 years old. I think he's 36. Like not saying I, I'm totally against you putting your hands on a woman, but they both were children. They both was kids, and they, they and and they they you know he 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 hit her, which is wrong. 
And I'm just saying, years later, I haven't heard about him in any other situation well, about beating women. That's the caveat. He has. So there was a story, cause, and um, him and Carucci, when they were together, mm -hmm. there. I don't know if he beat her, but there was some physicality. Okay. And then it was another baby mom where there was some physicality. Now, physical, you, you know, so I think it's kind of showing that there's a pattern of him and his hands. I don't think it was, you know, to the, in the same, I don't think it was the same circumstances as him and Rihanna, but I think there was a, there's a pattern. Some people might feel like, oh, that ain't nothing for a man just to grip you up by your arm or something. But if you, you grip some women up and they will call 911. Like mm -hmm. it does, you don't have to, some women don't have to get slapped or punched in order to and feel that they've if, been violated. If a man wants, if that's the kind of man that wants something done or wants his woman to do something and gripping her up and, and in gripping her up, she doesn't do it. The next thing will be a punch. Because gripping you up didn't work. Like you didn't do the thing that I asked you to do when I gripped you up and scared you the first time. So the second time, I ain't looking to grip you up because you don't respond to that. So now you might get knocked upside your head. Like Now I'm wondering, and I don't know this, did you know he do any um, rehab rehabilitative work? I think he did all that when that stuff happened. But again, he was 19 years old. We talking about a man in his yeah. 30s now. So I don't know if he's still doing um, domestic violence work or anything like that in the community. I just know I haven't heard about those situations that you just you just brought up. But that's plausible, and it might be a pattern with his hands. I'm just, it's just weird that, like you said, a lot of people in Hollywood have done worse shit mm -hmm. and been back on top. And it seems like this kid, yeah. like they keep, like holding. Look at Woody that. Allen. Look at um, yeah, like uh, what's the guy? He 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 had those um, uh, anti-Semitic um comments. Uh, Mel Gibson. Mel Gibson. I mean, no, that's different than domestic violence. But again, there have been situations. Look at the recent MMA guy. And that was just like, that's yeah, going to away like that. People, well, yeah, you're talking about a billionaire. Yeah. Like, like, he can make that go away. I don't know how, but you make it go away. Uh, yeah, Off yeah. the internet and everything. And you scrub the internet of the videos. So, like, I, I think um, part of it, to answer your question, yes. The and, and and you just mentioned something that's very important because we are such an internet driven society. It doesn't. It's like the stories can always be brought back up immediately. Mm -hmm. You know, a situation happened. Next thing you know, it'll be headlines all over your timeline from the did. old yeah. story. It's not like the newspaper where it's like. Oh, they may mention it or you may find it. Exactly. Or they may mention it on the news and you got to catch that news story. Now, you don't even have to catch it. You can just search for everything and it's right back there again. So that makes it hard to kind of get away from your past when it's it's at anybody's fingertips. So unfortunately, in this society, you are the sum of your worst moments especially when you're, you're, I don't want to just say a black man, a black man or a woman, you know. So you that, taught that shit. I mean, not in, in, I, and I, I believe that about myself, but it's like you taught that, but only you think that because you think to yourself, okay, I'm not my worst moment and I'm going to carry myself as such so people don't treat me and look at me as such. They see a change in me. But if I go out into this fucking world, and the public perception of me is some bad thing I did 20 years ago, then what the fuck? Well, that's why it's multi-layered because not only do you have to think that of yourself, you have to also tra train your mind not to allow public perception to change that or make you feel negative. Which is and hopefully your circle days. also supports who you are and your growth. I mean, let's, yeah, let's I mean, keep it I, real. I, I, forgot, but, I forgot that. It's yourself and your circle. But let's just look at this. We have firsthand knowledge of this. People still look at you as the Mar you used to be. Mm -hmm. People have had a very hard time. Well, that's why this, the fact this this it bothers me because of this. But go ahead. But yeah, people have had a very yeah. hard time accepting the fact that you aren't who you used to be. And and to be honest, I think I think if you are around people that remind you of that, then that makes it hard to escape from that. 
I don't know, I, but, but when you're around people who love you and accept you for who you are or have witnessed your growth, even if they haven't necessarily witnessed your growth, they accept you at face value, mm-hmm. then it makes it easier to, to move on in life without those thoughts. I don't know what people think about me, about my past as a, a teenager. I don't know. I don't care. It ain't in my, I don't think about it ever. Uh, if because I know you know who I am, I know my immediate circle knows who I am. So those thoughts aren't in my mind. Now it's different for us because our past isn't hindering our presence mm-hmm. like those in the inter- entertainment industry may h- how it may be affecting them. But yeah, it makes it difficult when it is spe- if you're constantly reminded. And for those people like a Chris Brown or whomever else. You, the internet, the internet, it it, it kind of becomes your um enemy because it's there to even if you have a great circle, even if you you are mentally in, in a, a a healthy mental state, the internet will very quickly remind you ah 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 like no 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 we remember I just who think you that's were fucked up that I mean yeah you feel that like I like like you said you feel that way about yourself your circle feels that way about you and that better be enough yeah. because when you go out into the world public perception of what you may have done, especially if you're popular and people know about it, 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 they judge you off, you know, off that. You got to worry about how God sees you and him knowing your heart and the people that love you most. Because you you can't change public perception. It's like you know a person, right? Uh, Like, Like what the fuck ruffles? Like, Well, ruffles commented and said... But that's bullshit, though. I think that's just bullshit because his fans probably jumped on their site and, and, and with all the bash and all the hate. I think that's just bullshit. That's just PR stunts to say we ain't had nothing to do with it. You know, know, and there's emails up. It happened to Gilly, and he said he don't even talk about it, but they sent him an email saying you're going to play in the in the celebrity league, you're going to play in the basketball game, and you're going to have this jersey, you're going to wear this and wear that. Three days before the thing, they put the team out, he wasn't on it. So it's like they they do this type of stuff to to send to people now. Every I don't know who this happened to, but everybody just don't talk about it. But he said he put the emails up. Like this is what y'all sent me. I this seen is what the y'all... emails, but they he assumed that it was Ruffles. Ruffles said. Well, that they were the sponsor. Happened. They were the only sponsor of the cele- of of the celebrity league. Um, of how the game. do we know it ain't Rihanna behind the scenes? We don't know. It's How just, do we know it ain't just the, the NBA, NBA said, worrying about their image? The and NBA said the sponsors. It. So the only sponsor for the celebrity game was Ruffles. So it's like, okay, you said it was the sponsors. But 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 that doesn't. It could have been other sponsors it involved been. with the overall weekend. It could have been that that whole that starry soda that popped out of the blue, the fake Sprite people. Yeah. Who I mean, I'm just saying it's all assumptions. Like we don't, I don't think they'll ever say if it was the NBA, they'll never say if it was Rihanna, they'll never say like you, I don't think anybody now it could be a thing where I don't know who participated in the all-star game, but maybe they, uh, the celebrity game. game, maybe they send it to, let's say how many people play in it? 10, 12, it's 12 and 12. So So 24, 25 people, 26. So maybe they send it to 40 people. And then they kind of see what the responses are. And then the more popular people are who they move forward with. And maybe Chris Brown just fell down the line of popularity. So why wouldn't Gilly be on there? He's and on he the internet have... every day playing basketball. But you got to think nationally, internationally. I'm not saying he's not popular, but if we need 24, maybe he number 26. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. He won the MVP in the big three league two years in a row. So that's national right there. So he's been seen, and he's on the, an internet every day playing basketball in some gym. Oh, I'm so not to, saying he's not. He just may, those other people may have had more of a lure than he did. Possibly. possibly. That's and I can't I, name who, I don't watch that shit. I, all I'm the only person I know, Keith Lee, which, of course, we know all the popularity know he has right now. Yeah, didn't know that. But I know Chris Brown has played in it a few times yeah. before. And done well, and he really can play basketball. I just, like he said, stop sending me this shit. Like, leave me alone. Yeah. But don't fuck with me like this. Don't send me shit and tell me you're going to do something or I'm going to do something. They told him he was going to be and a then, little Wayne team. Yeah, like, don't do all that kind of shit. Just leave me alone. And I'm not even, like, I ain't even checking for the game. I don't even, right. w- like, well, I don't want to be involved in it. But y'all, y'all reaching out to me. Like, that's just 
wrong to to judge somebody on uh not their merit today like if that dude ain't been in trouble for beating up women and all this kind of shit we always say people deserve a second chance and he was 19 when this shit happened he's in his 30s now like if he ain't beat up on no other women which i don't know about my I mean you said that he he has some situations there was some altercation. but with, with gilly saying that he got the same letter too and then not on a team it's making me think maybe this is his guilty conscious thinking that and it's not what he thinks it is because what, what would be the reason that they did that to gilly i don't know and i didn't that I that's what i'm saying know. like the fact and and you said who else do we know is not speaking up so maybe this is chris brown's guilty conscience and he's feeling like he's being punished because if he's played in it years prior and but not this year i think they would i i think they would have never allowed him to be so maybe this is his guilty conscience. Mm -hmm. It's just fucked up. It is. Like, I I, I agree. Leave me and alone. Maybe, Don't invite me. I'm not crazy. I think he played in this game before. I believe so, too. Yeah, I'm I not crazy so. in saying that. I think he played in this game before. So why he's outcast now, I don't I know. I think him and Bow Wow have played. I, remember, yeah. I think I remember seeing them before. Yeah, and I think he, like, won MVP, done well. It, like, you know, like, he can play basketball. But it's just, it's fucked up. By society standards, you're just who you are at the worst thing you did like it's like somebody jonathan majors is always gonna be that oj's always gonna be that but but well to that's your, a little drastic because he, he murdered two people well but to your point it's not even so much what you did is what you've been accused of not saying chris Brown isn't guilty but oj despite you know we think oj did it he was found innocent but that label will forever stick with him. Think about how many people have had charges against them, but that label will always stick with them. Kobe Bryant, rest in peace. The That case that he had in Colorado, which was unfounded, he was not um, convicted of anything. Was, did, was it dismissed or he was found innocent? He, he, it was dismissed. Oh, but that will always be attached to his name. Mm -hmm. That's what, and and that's the thing that that comedian Ari Shafir does when somebody dies. He brings up the worst things about them, and he did it with other people who died. So when he died, he brought up the Colorado case and all that kind of shit yeah. as shock value for clicks and views. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. No, I, you know, we we've known people in our life who have been charged with something. Hey, I'm sure y'all have too, and it and it might come up and be like. Who little Ray Ray that um you know did you know went to jail for but he could have been found innocent but the the worst things will stick to you like they say a lot of spread or bad news will spread faster than good news yeah so let let the, let them be like who little Ray Ray who got his master's degree that ain't gonna that ain't gonna stick to his name as much as little Ray Ray who murdered everybody at the Chinese store it's crazy um. Whoa, 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 whoa. DC Young Fly, right? Let's just do this real quick. DC Young Fly took to the internet to talk about um, he lost a bag at the Hollywood Bowl and he was like just distraught and upset about um, losing this bag. Um, and to come to find out, he had some personal items in there. He had Jackie O's death certificate mm -hmm. in his bag. Um, so my question is, and that I, I hurt for him and I hope that the, whoever has his bag gets that back to him. But do you, have you ever lost something that was like invaluable, like not losable? Like it should, it can't be lost and you lost it. Huh. And it's like, damn, like how the fuck did I lose that? I ain't talking about a pair of glasses. Like no material, no. like those $600 glasses that you lost that oh I bought you. Oh my God, I knew she was going with it. That's why I was trying to exit out, but I couldn't even get it out of my mouth. My mouth dry, that's why I couldn't get yeah. it out fast enough. Um, I can't think of anything that is that. That just broke your heart to lose. Because I could see his cry to like, you know, I just need the bag back as he was, you know, he, he's doing a video. And it's like, you could just see like, he want to break out crying, like, because I lost, like, my baby death certificate. Like, no. I'm still grieving over this shit, and how did, like, I lost that. No, I, I have, well, let me see. Or got stolen, whatever. Um, The good news is that he can get a replacement. Um, And I know that, like, this isn't, like, you're asking a bigger question that, but this story is another example that makes me dislike the internet so You think we should much. know about this? No, no, not that. The comments. 
Why? Wow. So many people. Why did you have that in your bag? Why are you carrying that around? What did you have a death sentence for? It's like, oh, first of all, who knows? He could have been leaving that place and going somewhere else to handle business. Like, it could be 99,000 reasons. all that. Reasons. He could have wanted to keep it with him because it's like his way of grieving. And this is like how I keep her close whatever to me. Whatever the, the fuck reason, it is. But it was so, like, it, <laughs> oh my goodness. I was, I just wanted to like, pluck people faces for uh, it was just the same questions over and over i probably seen just scrolling through the comments 17 people asked that and i was like i don't forget it um i so for my birthday for my 40th birthday and i never told you this for my 40th birthday my husband bought me a beautiful diamond tennis bracelet and one day i um i came in a house and my bracelet was go like I had it on my wrist and my bracelet was gone. I was petrified. Like I didn't know what the hell had happened. Like it's making my eyes water now because I remember just thinking like retrace my steps, retrace my steps, retrace my steps. And it's at our old house. Y'all, I got up the next morning when we had the doormat right in front of the door. Mm -hmm. My bracelet was laying on the doormat. I don't know how it had fell off my arm. Like when you put your key in the door, I may, maybe so. But thank God, like it was nighttime and we didn't, we don't have visitors th that you know came up our steps or anything like that. And my bracelet was there. So I mean, that was like the closest, you know, for about eight hours. And my eyes is watering just <laughs> thinking about it because I was so sad. I wasn't scared. I was sad. Like, damn. Like, I was really sad, but I found it. <laughs> it was there that next morning. But, I, but yeah, I haven't. I Not that I can think of. Yeah, to. I've never lost anything to that magnitude. Like, I've, I've never been in possession of anything that I've, you know, cared about like that to lose and be like, yeah. damn. Like, cause I don't think I would accept it. Like, I would go to that Hollywood Bowl and be all over the place. Yeah. Like, but I mean, he shit. can get it. It's like if you lose your birth certificate. I mean, yeah, it's not the I, original. I understand all that. You, like, you lose another. your passport, you lose your birth yeah. certificate. They, they, they can give you another one. I get it. But the fact That's that the, you gotta yeah. go through it and it's the original. And not only that, it coming in the mail again. Yeah, that can it's like not open the up same. all kind of wounds. Yeah. The fact that I gotta go reapply for it again opens up a wound. Like it was, I was at a place. Now yeah. I'm right back to the day I went in here and got this thing the first time. And let's not let's not forget, right? They weren't married, mm -hmm. so he probably had to get that from a family member. And who knows what his relationship might be like with a family member, where he may not be in a position to ask them to do it again. You know what I mean? Like, it, there could be a lot of factors in play here. Right. Um, or, you know, so, yeah, it, it could be a lot of factors in play. But, um, yeah, it's, it, that's, it's, it's very unfortunate. I hope that, you know, I hope that if he had a million dollars in that backpack, I hope that whoever found it just simply, like, let somebody know the death of kids. He was like, he, I had nothing, else. no money in it at all. He was like, just personal items. That's why I think you, if the, whoever has it should bring it back with everything in it because it didn't have nothing in it but shit that meant something to me. <coughs> <coughs> but, but you know what? It's crazy. Like, just to kind of pivot a little bit when I was saying the internet and, you know, it, it's one of them things and you can see the anguish in his face of even having to say this yeah. because he knows how the internet is. And like, he was like talking with his eyes yep. almost like I'm coming to y'all begging. But and even it, saying out loud, I hate even having to do this. Yeah, but it's sometimes though when 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 celebrities get backlash, I blame them, right? Because the and it, this is not about him, but the best way not to get backlash is shh. So Tiffany Haddish, did you see the video that she posted? Said she going to Israel. To she was on her way to it. Yeah, she was like, cause you know one side saying this, one side saying this, I want to learn for myself because the internet collide. And it's like, you you ain't even, you ain't even have to tell us. Nobody was going to be checking for you. You ain't have to make this video. You Because then it, it leaves so many, uh, it like, who do you think lying? The people in Gaza who's getting blown up? Who, the, the mothers, you know, they have said there have been 
um uh i think there's 250,000 women that are pregnant in gaza mm -hmm. that will give birth under these conditions god forbid if they're not killed like who do you think is lying here and it doesn't even matter you don't have to tell us but you didn't even have to tell us that you was doing this because nobody was checking for you <laughs> and it's it's just one of those moments where it's like you see people like soon as i see her post I just knew, first of all, it's, it said 24,000 something comments. So I knew people were just going in. I didn't even go through the comments, but me watching it was like, whatever backlash you get, at this point, I feel like you want the negativity because the best way not to get it is just shh, if I was, move if, on with your life. And like, you don't have to tell us. If I was DC, I would definitely would have came to the end of that. I yeah, in his that, case, he I had to. Sorry. I would think my fan base would be like, if yeah. something happened or somebody knows somebody that knows somebody that might have heard something, maybe it can get mailed back to me. You Like somebody can get in touch with somebody that I know and I can hear something through the grapevine. Who knows? But I definitely would have used my platform to say, hey, I lost something that really mean a lot to me. It would mean a lot to me if I could get it back. And whatever, and, and just let the cookies fall where they may. If I get it back, I, great. If I don't, then I don't. But I definitely would use my platform. I definitely would go on 85 South and be like, yo, you know, I was in Hollywood Bowl this weekend, such and such. If anybody know anybody that may have found this or heard. But you would, you got to think, right? Hollywood Bowl is a, not, it's a stadium, like mm -hmm. a small, of a smaller size venue. So you would think he left it backstage somewhere. Like he ain't leave it out with the people. So you would think w a, another comedian or one of their entourage members or a staff member. Like you, it's not like it was out with the general public. Yeah, but then you so talking you about hope. entourages. Yeah, that's Those what I'm saying. regular you, folk. They the, out, they the public. That's what I'm saying. But you would hope that whoever that, who whatever, whichever celebrity their entourage is with would be like, nah, that's not cool. Give him, like, give him his well, stuff back. That's they don't sad. know. Yeah, that's sad. You got entourages. You got people. That's the homies. Like them my niggas pick up a bag that they see sitting there and slip away with it. There, you you none the wiser. That's that your homie did that shit. He just thinking, oh, that's a little a, a shaving little bag or something like that. It might got like you know some stacks in there. Melon bag. It looked like a bag that you would keep money in, but then you open it, it's just papers. Yeah, melon bag. Even if you know if you don't even want to, if you want to keep the book bag or whatever, just mail the death certificate bag. Three grams. Um, going to work. What was this? Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning in a fog, and I was just like driving to work, and traffic slowed down for a little bit and stopped, and I had to like put the brakes on because there was another car in front of me and a truck behind me, and in between my car runs a horsey. Yep, I said it. A horsey. Horsey ran between my car, jumped over the median. I looked at the car in front of me. They didn't look back. The truck in the rear view mirror, he didn't look back. I looked over again. I didn't see the horsey. I kept driving. I didn't know if I really did see the horsey because I was tired. I was, I was, since I was smoking. Um, but I did know that I saw it. But I was thinking that I didn't because nobody else reacted. Nobody blew horns. Nobody turned their heads. Nobody did nothing. So I was hoping that this would be on the news. Got to work. Uh, my sister-in-law sent me a video of the horsey running on the road. Um, a lot of people, yeah. Good. So it made me feel good that I wasn't crazy or I wasn't like smoking something that I shouldn't have been smoking. There was a horse in Philly on 676 at 415 in the morning running with white feet, just galloping along and jumping over the middle the barricade thing, like just it looked like he right knew the directions. Him. Like he, he definitely had I a destination. I saw this horse on six seventy six intersection to get to seventy six. He was caught on ninety five in Port Richmond. He ran all the way around down the exit and on to ninety five. That is, um, I want to say like Gerard Avenue. Then he ran all the way up past Allegheny. To Port Richmond. He has like, that is go. insane. He had a destination in That mind. is insane. You didn't see the story all day. I hadn't been on the internet all day long. So I didn't get home. When I when I got home around 4.30 or so, I seen your video first. And I was like, what? A like, video of me in my car? Yes. Okay. But again, this is 4.30 in the afternoon. I'm watching and I'm like, 
what the heck? And I'm laughing. And then I see your story and I'm crying. <laughs> Like a crying laughing because one, we had sat on the phone for a long time that day. That's when yeah. we ride home together on FaceTime. You never mentioned anything, you never called me. So, as I'm reading, I'm thinking he probably really was thought he was tripping because he didn't even mention this <laughs> to me. Like, he probably, like, I don't even want to tell her. I she thought you would have said, Yo, it was a horse on the road today, and I'd have been like, Oh, yeah, I saw it, but. I I wasn't on the I, work was working me. I had not picked up my phone to like look at anything internet related until four thirty ish, and I was crying, laughing, like just imagining your thoughts and how you was feeling in that moment. Like I'm really tripping right now, yeah, I did. and I I could imagine you in your truck talking to yourself. The like, routine you drive to work, you see the same cars, it's the same time, you see the same trucks. So it's like the same thing is happening, like deja vu every morning. That's what makes it so monotonous. And then all of a sudden, horse comes running back. Yes. <laughs> it's just like, what? what the <laughs> fuck just happened? Yes. Like, if I wasn't woke, I'm woke now. And that's like one of them things, like, you know, everybody pull out their phone for accents and that kind of stuff. You don't even get an opportunity for that. Like, he was so fast. Of... He was so fast. Like, and I was like, like a horse and I look I'm like he had white feet and then the car in front of me just drove forward like I'm going to work and the car behind me was like the truck behind me was like inching up on me I'm like okay like maybe we, I didn't see anything mm. maybe I was listening to talk radio they wasn't talking about horses so I, I, I don't know but I'm glad that it was a real thing okay. um, what appalls you every time you think about it what appalls me <sighs> that, that's like a... grind your gears, totally disgust you. Um, not a person, a thing. Um, I mean that that can get deep or it can get shallow. I mean, you think about well, like, stay on the surface. I was gonna say because you think about kids being abused. I that's right. I didn't want you to so go yeah, there. but like something you know that let's not drown here. Grinds my gears. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> this is so petty. Right? Th I use the word appalled, but but like so. Appalled, like just ugh. you know what? When people walk around with their pants dragging on the ground, okay, that's something that's like, like I I can't. I, I like a little length to my pants, but pants that drag the ground and then you bring that in your house. I feel the same with like fuzzy shoes. Like I don't like like the furry um slippers, slippers or. Ugg boots or whatever kind of furry shoes because it drags the ground and then you bring those germs into your house. You know what else appalls me in this day and roll, age? Right. Yeah, because this has been on my mind and now I'm feeling like See, this is the truth. I'm, I'm the anomaly, the right? It's a thing now where people just threw punctuation out the window. I guess because it's social media, they just type and type and type and type and type and type and type of paragraph, whatever, and like. I, it it boggles my mind <laughs> how people can write and go on and go on and there's no period a period <laughs> at the minimum I know everybody doesn't Don't know, know the correct place comma, comma placement everybody isn't sure about the possessive apostrophe in some cases a semicolon I know throw that out the window I'm sure people are not familiar people with, with that exclamation points. but a period and, and sometimes I read it and it's like, you didn't, I, I, it, it hurt, it bothers me. It bothers me. And I mean, it's so trivial, but it, I don't care how inspirational your message is. If you write like that, I don't want nothing to do with you. <laughs> I don't want nothing to do with your page. Um, as a man, I, my, it was, um, as a man, I like women with, well, I love my wife, but when I would, I, how do I want to say this? I l like to look at women who have nice hands and feet. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it appalls me women who wear sandals and have bad feet. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, like, why do you do that? Like, why do you well, do that? What do you consider bad feet? Like, um, bad toenails, bunions, corns. Like, you got bad feet. Like, you look cute from head, but not to toe. Well, a bunion is kind of hard because, you know, for some women... 
if you have a bunion, the cure to that is surgery. Then you got to be down for all that time. And that's a big... Fuckers getting butt surgery, thighs and hips. and the, We can do all that shit and suck out fat, but we can't correct something that's... Well, because they can be up and popping in three days. You got to be down for six weeks and you can't wear... No, you got to wear a boot on your foot for... I mean, I'm just saying bunion surgery is a big deal. Um, corns and stuff like that. I feel like if you got a corn... I, I never had a corn, thank you God. three corns. And they, still I think they go the away sandwich. in a couple days, right? If you put those pads on them. I don't know. I never had one either. Me but either. Th 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 I think it leaves, it stays the mark. It's like, it always looks like you have it. Well, so if that's the case, what are they never supposed to wear a sandal again? I just don't think the, the, the <laughs> women with the worst, I mean, it's bias, it's shallow, but I just don't think women with the worst feet, the with real bad feet shouldn't wear sandals. Like. You messed up. Your feet got messed up. That means a pair of shoes is out for you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. It's a bunch of other shoes you could wear. Um, last gram. John Cheeks is a black man from D.C. And this is... I'm, I'm, I'm not liking how the lottery is doing people. He played the lottery. Now, this is a little error. Played the lottery. A Powerball. Numbers on the internet were different than the ones that was pulled in the in the balls. So they reported the wrong winning On numbers. the internet. Left him up there for three days, which in turn think he won $340 million. When they brought him in there and told him it was an error and he lost his mind and got a lawyer and all that shit, they played the tape for him from the show that night. And it was five other balls. So what was reported on the internet and left there for three days was an error, a mistake on their part. $340 million. The woman got gagged on the machine because the machine didn't the, make oh, that casino. much. Yeah, like what are we doing with the lottery and all these hundreds of millions of dollars and you getting people excited as they ever been in their and life. And California keep winning. Yeah, and Oregon and shit like that. And then you, like, nothing. I feel like there's, I mean, he didn't win. So I don't feel like he should get the 340, but there should be some consolation. A what million dollars. That, okay, I was about to say, what range do you think A million that's dollars. Just, because I think that I'm getting some life-changing money. So you should be giving me some life-changing money. There should money. be some, um, uh, you know, for for um, gr uh, stress-related payment. Pain like, and suffering? Pain, yeah, pain and... Like people sue for nothing? Yeah, pain and suffering. Because who knows the lengths they... What if he quit his job in preparation... <laughs> To collect his three hundred forty million dollars, and then y'all tell him he because again, what reason would he have to think that it's not true? And he saw it on the internet on the page. He took a screenshot of it. Yeah, it's what there for reason three days. is it for him to believe that what they it's, it was on a lottery website? Yeah. What reason is it for him to believe that that isn't true? So technically, he could have started getting his affairs in order before he could have hired an accountant, a lawyer. hired a lawyer. Quit his job. He could have put his home up for sale in preparation to collect this money so he and can move go, on with yeah. his new life. And now y'all telling him, oh, we made a mistake. Nah, there has to be some consolation. Yeah, I definitely think there has to be consolation anytime the lottery fucks up any amount of money. Yeah. If they fuck up your 10000 they gotta they got to make that Give right. me 1000 Yeah, it's the lottery, yeah. bro. Like millions and millions and millions of people play this shit every day and don't win. And that's just free money for y'all. Yeah. And y'all say y'all give it back to the old people, but y'all don't. The old people <laughs> still need shit. Like, the old people still need shit. So, yeah, anytime they fuck up, they fuck up a $150 three number, like, they need to make it right. Yeah. They need to make that, that shit right. was on me. Oh, man. Yeah, for three whole days. And then they took it down. When Like, once he was like, yo, I won the lottery. It's like, nah, I don't think you did. And then they played him the show. And sure enough, it was five different balls. From that night, somebody did that wrong. I, I whoever's ooh. in charge of posting the numbers, but you did would that think wrong. there's no quality check process. Oh, oh my goodness, mm. I'm upset for him, Mr. Chief. You need you need to get a, you need a better lawyer because <laughs> your Chief. lawyer should have got you some money. I did not see that. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Chief, you, we call no other nigga no Mr. Chief. <laughs> 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 Mr. Chief. 
Uh, let's do a wrap. Act two, the podcast episode 163 coming to a close. It's your boy, International Walk. It's your girl, Tasha, the co host with the most is. Facebook, act to the podcast.com, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Podcast Index, Pod Addict, Podcast Chaser, Player FM, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts. Mm -hmm. You can catch us on all those platforms. Um, it's your boy, International Walk. Again, it's your girl Tasha Co host with the most. Again, and it's your boy in National Walk. And it's your girl Tasha Co host with the most. And we encourage you to be full of love and light. Um, positivity, positivity, positivity. If you fuck with us, you fuck with us. If you don't, you should. Peace.